Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing, deliver healthy taste options to clientele, and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com. Hello, food fam. This is the Walk and Talk podcast, your favorite food podcast. And I'm your host, Carl Fiadini. We're podcasting on site at Ibis Images Studios, where food photography comes alive. On the menu today, um, to wrap up National Hispanic Heritage Month, Chef Jeffrey Schlissel cooked up another delicioso dish. Um, We're talking uh, mojo marinated steak. The chimichurri, manchego, cheese, tomato, potato, planks, grilled, oh my god, filet with the risotto too, it's a whole other dish. Man, it's going to be great. Thank you, uh, Peninsula Food Service, for supplying the proteins for today's production. Um, Today, our boy, the J-Master, Jay Gardner, Citrus America, he is the juice man. Um, We're having a blast today. Jefferson. It's all about the juice. It's all about the juicy juice, baby. All right, so um, first of all, what's the name of this drink? This is the Walk and Talk Old Smoky. Oh, my gosh. Before we jump into anything else, tell everybody what's in this wonderful, wonderful cocktail. Yumminess. Yeah, well, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a fresh squeezed orange juice from the Citrus America juicer that Jay's going to talk about. We've talked about in previous uh, podcast. It's got some lemon juice in there as well. Then, since I was up in um, New Hampshire, um, he took me. Keith took me to this farmer's uh, that they actually have smoked pecan smoked maple syrup. It was that just, was crazy. Yeah, and that's part of the sweetness that comes in. And then we did some bourbon on top of that, and it's, it's beautiful. It really is. Yeah. And we did get some, uh, John got some some shots as well. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we're going to post everything. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. You, you know, if that um, photography doesn't go well for him, you know. I know. You know, if, uh, right. The production, I should say. Then he's got to fall back on the yeah, production. Yeah, he's got to do something with the, the photography. That, that camera. Do something with the camera. <laughs> um, I want to put the recipe up, too. Also... I'd like you to, when you're just, not all the dishes, because there's a bunch, right? But right. Um, maybe for the uh, maybe for the um, chimichurri. Yep. Maybe talk about the recipe a little bit. Sure. Right? Yeah. This way, you know, this way the listeners can kind of follow along, you know, write it in their little journals and stuff. If there's such a thing. Or a whiteboard. Does anybody have whiteboards? Uh, or a smartphone. Smartphone. Right. All right. Uh, before we bring Jay on. Listen, you know what to do. Yeah, it's a lineup. Yeah, it's sexy time. <laughs> Talk food, get into the shift. Uh, yeah, let's do it. So we took skirt steaks. This is what we wanted to do this time. And uh, I was trying to do something that was really different. And as I was researching what we could be doing differently, back in the day when I was younger, I've mentioned it before, there's this wonderful butcher shop over on 46th and Hollywood Boulevard called Josie's. And they used to do this pinwheel skirt steak that was pesto, sun-dried tomato, and spinach in it. And it was just something that was so easy, so simplistic, but it was so flavorful. And I said, well, let me just go ahead and gear this up. And since we had Citrus America, plus we're doing Latin Heritage Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, wanted to do something and pay homage, to the, again, to the Latin American community or Hispanic community. So we made the mojo which is my version of it is uzu, lemon, orange, or tangerine, and then built it from there, cilantro, uh, oregano, a little bit of you know heat behind it. They use a red pepper in Argentina that's you know indigenous to Argentina. That's where the chimichurri comes from. To them, it's their ketchup. It goes on everything. And I think it just brightens everything up, especially when you have a, a fatty steak 
you hit it with that acid it comes through. It's just beautiful. And then I wanted to do something that was a little bit different with potatoes. So I have this thing that I just saw one day. And I'm like, yeah, I want to do something. I love steak fries. It's like my go-to if I'm going to get fries. And uh, the reason why I like it so much is because it's got that crunch on the outside and that meatiness inside of the potato that's just so delicious. Oh, yeah. So I bronze them in a plank style, and it has that crust on the outside of the potato. And then you know, as you get inside, it's almost like mashed potatoes. You, you had me nervous a little bit today. <laughs> I always like, do. Yeah, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do planks. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> I said yeah. I'm here to eat. I'm not I'm not here for working out, man. Like that's. Not my game. Yeah, we we know we have to stay it up on the BTS, the, yeah. the big tummy status. Big tummy status. Hashtag Amy Yee. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So anyway, go ahead. Get back into so. And we just we have filled it up with sun dried or did tomato spinach chimichurri inside the, the uh, actual steak and mojo seasoning and roll that up in a pinwheel. Yeah. Can we put for the guest like the guests like they're eating yeah. the uh, the chimichurri? Right? Yeah. No. Can we um the audience let's post the recipe yeah yeah sure okay and we'll put it in the uh, the description of uh of this podcast yeah i think the other dishes that we did today were you mentioned filet with the risotto oh my god that was so good yeah that that's there's a story behind this one so my dad and my mom were paying uh, a condolence call to a friend of theirs and they were supposed to be home at a certain time and they went really late. So by the time they get home, I'm like, I can't do a three course meal. It's too late. It's let me just slop this together. So basically, the first course was supposed to be uh, pistachio or pecan nut encrusted brie with some baguette and stuff like that with a jam on it. And then I was going to move into the entree, which was like a filet with Marcella mushrooms that were in the risotto. And then the dessert was the final course. The final uh, course. When they came home, I just slapped it all together. My dad looked at it and he goes. Brie with a jam and the, this is disgusting. How can this be good? My dad passed away, what, four or five years ago. And up until his death, that was the number one meal. He loved that meal. Day in and day out, he would tell me. And you were a kid too. Yeah, I was in my, my 20s, early 20s. So was that was pre, pre, uh, pre, pre, pre culinary school? I think I was in culinary school. Oh, so you thought you knew what you were doing. Oh, right? I had no idea what I was doing. I knew I knew nothing. Did I you still really? don't. Yeah, I still don't. Know so nothing. you're ahead of the game because most most kids who are in culinary school. They're thinking they know everything. Oh, I, when I went to culinary school, no offense to where I went, Jay Wu down in Miami. Um, they were delusions of grandeur that some of the instructors were saying. They're like, "Oh, you're going to do this when you get done, and you're going to make this when you're done." And I'm like, I wouldn't hire any of these people. And I was there's like two people in my court class, myself and somebody else, because when I went to the weekend program, everyone else was switching. Uh, occupation, so they were going on a weekend. What year was that? Not that long ago, you bastard. It was 94 to 96. Wow. So, yeah. Jeez. That's like pre Emerald and everything. No, Emerald was out. What? I don't remember. Emerald, yeah, Emerald was out. But in he, the didn't 90s. Hot, he, he didn't get hot until like 2000. No, but he was still out with his program. He had his original program called Emerald, and that was the BAM. And then he went to his TV show that got bigger, like a Sally Jesse Raphael or Yeah, or I remember that. he really exploded yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, but yeah. he was definitely, because I remember going to culinary school and you'd see him, you know, double dip and taste with his finger. And I'm like, oh, he double dipped, he double dipped. He <laughs> How can you do that? You know, because um, you're going through the food safety courses and stuff like that. And but when you say BAM, it makes everything better. I will uh, say this. <laughs> uh, in South Florida, at that time, I worked for a produce company. And A one A or or Carnival, which one? It was actually A one A. Yeah, yeah. And I remember that. one of the sales reps. I forgot her name was Candy Kim, Chris Kim Kim. I think she. So um, Emerald had a, a location down in South Beach somewhere, and this you know the sales rep opened the account, and it was cool because you know like Emerald, yeah, and. Um, <clears throat> It was a good experience. Not even I had nothing to do with it, but it was nice just to be even close to that because you got to like kind of feel the energy. Um, yeah, it was good times. Good times. Um, I, I feel bad. I feel terrible. Why is that? You ever have like a puppy dog and they're just sitting there and they're, they're just looking at you like this? Uh, yeah, you mean this one next to me? Yeah, Jay. Oh. Let's bring Jay. Jay, come on. <laughs> Welcome. I had no idea where he was going with this one. I thought it was Smokey was looking at you. Curveball, baby. Um, Jay, my man, my boy. How the hell are you? Doing great, guys. I I saw that coming a mile away, though. Um, Glad you did. So, yeah. 
Uh, first off, uh, where's the script? You told me I'd have a script <laughs> as I walked um, in the door. Here. Uh, makeup, like, what's we going need makeup on? for sure. Yeah, How about yeah. that? Listen, makeup? here's the biggest yeah. thing that we ever did today. John knew you were coming. <laughs> 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 so, so last week, just, just for some for so reference. Wait, so every other guest, no big deal, but you have to warn John that Jay's coming. I like your angle. I like your angle. I like your angle. No, like your angle. no, that's not what really happens. Yeah, no. So last week, um, you know, they were attacking me. I was accosted, verbally accosted uh, by these two because, you know, they're, I'm, you know, we're all busy. You know what I mean? <laughs> So sometimes I'll forget to mention uh, something like a little a little uh, factoid about maybe somebody showing up here, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ding dong. Oh, who's, who's that? that? Oh, that's Patrick. <laughs> Patrick's here. Oh, uh, Patrick's yeah. coming today. Well, we had a guest today. Patrick. Oh, okay. and not just any guest. It's Patrick. Like yeah. The Patrick Kelly. Yeah. 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 PK. The Patrick Kelly of the produce industry podcast. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, they were breaking my balls real heavy. <laughs> And, um, we, we still are. Yeah, still are. Anyway, once, once you and I coined, you know, figured out the date and the calendar, I immediately, immediately like the fastest ever turnaround. He really did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Huh? He, he actually put it out on Monday. Yeah. I mean, whatever. So <laughs> Tuesday. So Tuesday. No, first time, first time, first time ever. Yeah. yeah. So you well, should know the, the, the applause, uh, <laughs> button right now, buddy. <laughs> anyway, um, Welcome I, to the program. I, I was also promised bread and sauce. Where, where's my bread and bread sauce? Bread or gravy? Yeah. Well, no, no, there's no such thing. Like, well, first of all, well, we don't is, have the bread because Amy Yee that, hasn't made it. I'm tired of bringing her name up and her not has still not. Well, actually, okay, she wait, wants, wait, she wait, wants wait, to wait, come wait. up on, a, on. She already told me she's got up until the, you know, her calendar's open. She did mention a date. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you would want to do it. All right. She sent me a, she sent a side chat about that. So it's not really her fault. She's like, look, whenever, you know, whenever you can, you know, get me in there. So I have to put the schedule together. That's all. It's going to happen. And I want my freaking bread. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It sounds delicious. That's all I, I've been listening for weeks. You should follow her on, just on, the, on the socials. She looks like she does a really good job. Yeah. So, so she's part of a group. I, I saw this on Facebook and it's called the sourdough geeks. Oh, wow. And it's, I got involved in the group. My God, these guys and gals. are serious yeah. about sourdough. Like I have never seen that before. Every post is, "Hey, I just started. What does this look like? Please be nice to me." Wow, that's heavy. <laughs> I, I like that. You know what? Yeah. Listen, when anybody's like really um, passionate about any damn well, any normal thing, um, I like it. I can embrace it. Good for you, Amy. Um, bring my bread. So, listen, uh, Jay. S- sorry, Amy. I, I, that was my fault. <laughs> yeah, I, good, I, good job. I started this uh, rant. You know, listen, um, Jay's. Uh, he's all, not not only is he a guest and a vendor partner for the show, um, but he's a fan. Absolutely, yeah, I listen listens. listen every every week. Sometimes I I binge a little. So well, I this give is it a the, couple. So of does Carl. <laughs> 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 I, I don't binge on steak, I'm, but uh, I am me- speaking of I binging am going through steak. the meat sweats right now. I'm sweating out like just prime fillet. It's crazy. That's why you have the towel. Uh huh. <laughs> no, I work hard. Mm. I work hard. That's what this is. Of dirting a towel up after he eats. Yeah. Um, Jay, you got to kind of see behind the curtain a little bit about what we do. We're having a blast. This was fun. First off, thanks for the invite, you guys. This is it's always great hanging out with you guys, and I feel like family. I, you probably don't feel the same way, so it's just like family. But uh, is he still here? Yeah. Oh wait, oh, there he is. Exactly. Not Jay, Uncle yeah. Jay's coming. <laughs> yeah. 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 Security. Uh, so, but uh, a blast. Like some of this food that you put out today, Jeff, was just absolutely mind blowing and very beautiful. And and John taking these shots. Some of these shots were. I mean, they're professional looking, John. I, I don't know what to say. They're very professional looking shots. Like Sears? Yeah, like. Oh, is that like. Wow. <laughs> Good God. But, I should have had that on camera. <laughs> but he said not, professional. Like, I don't know. It's, no, I'm talking about John's like burning like laser oh, eyes yeah. at you. Laser eye daggers. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. No, hey, not. It's fun, too. Right? It was not for but, the uh, faint of uh, heart. Oh. 
all this food that these guys talk about all the time, they, that's what they do, right? They torture everybody who's <laughs> listening all the time. I, like, I'm on my way home, and I'm like, I'm starving right now because of all this food that you're talking about. You know what? It's just as incredible as they say it is. So, Thank Jeff, you. props, man. Thank Food's you. incredible. Lots of layers in it. But, but mm-hmm. out of all of that... This drink <laughs> is <laughs> off the hooks. Well, absolutely. I, I got I, one thing. Is, as you drink that, I got to tell everyone, Jay, you, what what normally do you eat? Like, what category are you in? Oh, Lettuce. You, you had to. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I knew this was going to come out. All right. All right. <laughs> let's, have some, let's, get, let's get insight. So, no, you did yes. something today so, that was very interesting, and that's why I want to make sure. <laughs> so, not a, so you're outing me too. Wow. Okay. So, no, I just yeah. I want your come out of the I, oven. I I am wow. a vegetarian. Come out of the oven. <laughs> right. The oven. I I am a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian for a long, long time. Um, I've just recently started trying some seafood and a few things here and there because I travel a lot. And when I'm on the road, it's really hard to eat well, um, as a vegetarian. And so I started just going, okay, maybe I'll eat a little better and try a little meat here and there. And I'll tell you what, when I was looking at some of the stuff that Jeffrey made, I had to try a little beef today. So, and it was freaking delicious. So, um, Hi, my name's Jay, yeah. and I'm a vegetarian. I'm a recovering <laughs> vegetarian. <laughs> wow. No, I, and you know, the reason why I say that is because it's props, because someone that doesn't eat meat and then they try it and they have the reaction that you did, it speaks volumes, you know? Oh, well, I, would, and I appreciate I, You know that. what? Listen, let's, I'm going to, I'm, you know, chefs don't get enough ego stroking. I, I think we took care of that so far yeah, today. No, yeah. uh, last week. We had uh, Ropa Vieja, right? Oh. And uh, my Cuban wife, love her to death, but she's a pain in the ass, okay? <laughs> she, you know, like she will complain about the best of the best food. It's just, she just does. I say it on, I, I say it and I own it. She loved it. She, she loved it. My mother-in-law, the, uh, the yuca, yuca mash, mm-hmm. I said, look, do me a favor. Save me just a little bit, you know. <laughs> and she, the other day, yeah, a couple of days ago, she's like, uh, "Carlo, uh, yeah, I ate it all. I'm sorry. It was too delicious." And I was she like, wasn't sorry, Carl. No, she wasn't. No. I wasn't yeah. even mad. I was like, because I want her to eat the stuff. I, I, whatever I bring home, leftovers like the the doggy bags from from here. Oh man, I want them to all enjoy it because I, I want them. I want them to embrace this and be happy. Jeff is. He took my oh, the empanada. <laughs> the empanada was delicious. That didn't even make it home. I ate that in the car. <laughs> I ate that in the car. You, you weren't full enough after leaving here. You no, had to eat more in the car on the well, way. Wait a minute. If you think my empanada is good, Jessica, um, we know, yeah. right? Jessica John. Yeah. She's the empanada queen. We've got to get her on here. All right. Well, then, you know, down. Jess, you're going to hopefully hear this. Bring empanadas. <laughs> you know, the same day that Amy's going to bring the bread, bring the empanadas. Let's uh-huh. do, what are we talking about here? Yeah, she she really is a phenomenal cook as well. Jess, Interesting. Yeah. She can definitely throw it down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, all right. Party update. Flyers are going out tonight. <laughs> it was John because I think flyers are going out him. tonight. I have the stuffed foods wrap and, and also kebabs. Beautiful. They're gonna they're gonna actually show up. They're gonna do all the you know they're gonna uh, cook up and serve uh, their stuff that we we chose. Stuff. Yeah. Uh huh. So that's gonna be pretty cool. I'm excited yeah. about that. And uh, I'm excited about the you know the bar, the food, the the whole thing. We have a DJ coming and. Um, Look, this is our first one, and it's only going to be like a very small number of people. So those of you who are close to us that aren't on this list, you're going to be on the next one. Okay? I just want everyone to know that. Yeah. yeah. And, and just so everyone else knows, too, one of the items I'm going to be featuring for the food aspect of it that I'm going to be doing is actually um, Happy Tails pig that I actually fabricated uh, about two weeks ago. Um, Wilbur's who I called him. <laughs> 
and uh, we're going to be doing featuring a Cooney Cooney New Zealand um, breed. And we're going to be smoking that and having that. What the hell are all these names? <laughs> all of these well, things I want to like, I feel like I should be bleeping you on. I mean, <laughs> what are you talking well, about? Cooney Cooney is so the breed. Good. Okay. A pig like Berkshire. Oh, ah, okay. Um, Never heard of it. Those are heritage breeds. Mm. They're not a commodity. Mm. Um, I know Jane Rivera um, uh, from City Chicks just um, fabricated or, or harvested, because you can't say you slaughtered. Um, it, it was harvested her pigs that she has. I think she has Berkshires. The meat that you see on that, the redness through, that's how you know it's a heritage breed. The stuff that you get at our supermarkets are pink and they look a little bit malnutrient. Those are, that's what's going on. It's They're malnutrient. Nutrient. Nurtured. Deficient. Nourished. Um, oh my God, you're nourished. screwing me up too. You go? Oh <laughs> well, malnourished, but they're also malnourished as far as they're, they're, what they're giving fed. Their feed, yeah. Yeah. So when you have, when you get to know your, your farmer, by the way, happy farmer's day uh, today, we saw that on somebody's reel. Yeah. Amy E. Who did that? I feel like we're bringing her name up way too much. And for not having any bread, she's getting a lot of attention. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, she's got a lot of good Again, things I'm in the sorry, works. Sorry, Amy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yeah, can you do me a favor and talk to Carl and stop tell, tell him to bring my name up? I said, don't worry, I'll be the first one to bring it up. He was. You. Keep your <laughs> name out oh, my head. Okay. Out. Okay. Right. She's like, who is this J guy? I don't even know this guy. I don't even know this guy. Who's that? Well, listen, um, Jay's great for the cocktails. Yeah. Right? That machine is, yeah. Is well, I mean, he's connected to the you know machine. Yeah. Right? And umbilical cord, I saw it. No. We are one. <laughs> we are one. What machine is, what, by the way, what is that called? So this is a Citra Casa Citrus Juicer. This is the right. Fantastic Citrus. MAS. What? Doesn't really. It, it's, not, so it's not a great it's, name. So it's Austrian engineered. So it's also named by Austrians, so it's very technical. Mm. Um, think of it as the fantastic. Oh, okay. I can, I, see, the, I can get behind that. Yeah. yeah. And the, what's, fun, what's funny is you mentioned the drink earlier, and we, where you said what's in the drink, and it's a half ounce of orange juice, and it's a quarter of an ounce of lemon juice, and we bulk prepped it. We used one, or, one lemon, threw that in, and it put out the exact amount of lemon juice that we needed for the bulk. Not that it was just coincidence. It was just the way it was running. The machine does. It was like nothing flat to do that. It was me. Sorry. It was my watch. Um, it was beautiful. Like as a bartender, as a chef, you, we talked about it when we were at the uh, double tree in Orlando, the marinades that you can come up with that. Yeah. It bulk. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you have an orange juicer. And it, yes, it does juice orange, but it's a citrus juicer is, is what we have. And they, you know, think marinade, salad dressings, um, bars, mixers, and fresh orange juice, too. So it, it does a whole lot of different things, and it is pretty fantastic. You know who I wish was here? Uh, wish uh, we're here for this. Pooch. Yeah. That's another guy we mention all the time. If he was here, he'd buy that thing right yeah, on but, the spot. But, see, but listen, Pooch is, um, all right, so we're going to this uh, World Food Championship, uh, November 8th to the 12th. Uh, yours truly will be a master judge for the event. We will be podcasting. Who is going to be coming on this trip? You got Big Bad John, the producer. You've got Jeffrey Schlissel, the Schlisselmeister. Jay, this Right here, this dude, he's coming. We're handing out fresh greased orange juice for the event while we podcast live. Um, it's going to be so cool. Who else is going to be there? Pooch. Big Pooch Daddy. That's right. So it's going to be pretty badass. Now, what's going to be very cool, this whole event is going to be very cool. On the way back, on the return, there's going to be... Debauchery. Debauchery. <laughs> it's going to be a road trip, right? <laughs> Yep. You're, you're going to be road tripping uh, with Jay and you and the juicing machine in the truck. Oh, my God. It's going to be badass. It's going to be cool. And it's going to be like we're going to you're going to record. We're going to get some content, some footage. Oh, like yeah. on the road. <clears throat> excuse me. On the road doing your thing. I hope you're ready for this, Jeff. I mean, I'm pretty excited about this. I hope you're ready for this. Are you kidding? This is what I do, right? <laughs> I don't always drive, but we hit the road a lot. 
and we have fun. It's it's fun. It's hard work. You oh, do I, a lot of work. You you know you have to clean the juicer too after you have all this fun. Oh man, I wish but, I could uh, be there for that. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah sure nothing like that. <laughs> but no, it, you know we have a blast, and we have juicers hooked up right in the back of the van, so you literally just pop open the doors, and you're making mixers, fresh juice. I mean orange juice. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I was a- yeah, it's 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 great. And and I was actually thinking that at I. This event's going to be great. I, I'm looking forward to it. And Carl called and he's like, Jay, you're always on the road. I have to ship all of my equipment. What am I going to do? And I'm like, load it in my van. Bud. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. I, I think we're going to have a blast. We appreciate that, by the way. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, he, he, we, that literally walked him off the ledge. Yeah, he was it for the, up until you said, you sure, I'll take it. Listen, listen. Do you know what it is? Electronics. Oh, like very delicate equipment. To go on a plane with the plane people throwing all the stuff every no way, man, forget it. No, and well, I get it. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm not busting your balls. I'll bust but, your balls. By the way, you're welcome for being the master judge. Um, yeah, yeah, it's my I my know. food, my cooking that did that. As all, I'm pointing to your belly, all yeah. the training. He's been training. Yes, he's well, like rock. Actually, if, if we want to be. Where's the Rocky except music? In, Come on, John. It's the Rocky music right it, now. In, or, instead of me hitting the, the yeah. you know, the, the meats, full animals, I'm meats. just taking bites out of them. You know what I mean? But I've got, I've got three in my house if you want to come over and Bro, take I, a bite out of them. I'll take, like a, man, I'll be like the... Which, Vicky Mc, dropped Mc, off Mc, three Mc, of McGruff the crime dog taking a bite out of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I don't see him running up the steps and filming. No. Very no, slowly. No. It's a slow walk. I don't hold the mask. Have you heard him? Did you hear last podcast? You can hear me. sounds like... Tony Soprano. like... <laughs> I'm breathing heavy. Like I was going to say Friday. Dom DeLuise. Oh my God. The audience would be like, who's that? Yeah, but, <laughs> but I'm not sweating on my on my cheeks right now. You but are. I, well, yeah, it's warm in here. Hello. Uh, no. Who was working? Me. I was working. Attention chefs and food buyers. Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service. With 25 butchers on staff, their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the Southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service cut your beef burdens away and ask about their dry-aged program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. You know, being I, have, diff- I have pictures. <laughs> I definitely have pictures of Carl working. I'll post oh them later. Oh my God! Yes, please. When do. you're the director, you're 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 just all over no, the you're place. You're not the director. You're the eater. I am the direct eater. <laughs> he writes. <Okay. laughs> he does curls. One fork, two fork. All right, all right. Silence. All right. So here's the st- here's the story though. Please do Here's fork. the truth though. No, no, no. Stop, stop. If it wasn't for Jay, introduce bringing us to Nafum. Right. 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 And Brian, for that mm-hmm. matter. Mm-hmm. When you would have met a pink suit. I mean, what's his name? Mark Conway. Mark, stop. See, I told you, you remember his. Ep- you. <laughs> anyway. Um, because we were invited as a guest to NAFM 23, an equipment show for the industry. For those of you other who are not in the know, we met, you know, Mark Conway, who. Um, you know, he's the, um, you know, Ryan Seacrest of the, you know, World Food Championship. Anyway, um, Mark and I have been talking f- since February, January, whatever that show was. February, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he gave a call and, and he made the offer. So, really, this man right here, Big J Dog. Oh, I can pay that back to you. You ready for this? I'm not sure, but so I am working on. to get the Walk and Talk Media to Cater Source in uh, Austin, Texas, which is from like four days in February, like 11th or something like that. Oh my goodness. It goes on, and I might be able to get you in our booth. Absolutely, and there are like eight thousand members going to be in Austin. I mean, I've got two different pre- presentations I'm doing, so it might be something that we can talk more I about. I mean, all of a sudden we're a traveling show, uh, which is scary, <laughs> really, but um, yeah, it's really cool. You know, we're doing, and that's what's, I mean, we're, okay, so what are we doing? 
we have the food component where, you know, Jeff is doing his thing. You have the John component, you know, where, you know, the photography, um, you know, I'm connecting us with different brands, you know, like Citrus America and, you know, um, Peninsula and just, there, you know, there's like on a dozen or so all awesome. We're out there. We're actually in the trade. We're at the shows. We're in the kitchens. We're talking to the chef, literally with the chefs. A lot of action is happening um, around walk and talk. And man, I, first of all, thank you, you and you and the audience. Like this is, this is really an amazing um, situation. You know, the fact that uh, last week we were, we spent four days in the number one position, um, you know, on the Apple charts for the food category, four days. We've been, we've been ranking for 11 months and we were in the top 10 for probably three months. Really awesome. But then we hit number one and I, you know, I, it's just really great. Really great. You guys, you're always number one in my book. I, I don't care that's about why any of those welcome. other things. So you're then, always and welcome. And that's why, are, and that's why we allow you to, to <laughs> hang out with us. <laughs> Yeah. You know, he just did that motion like Tony Soprano. That's why yeah. we... Yeah. I mean, it's a, You're it's always number you. one in my book. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. hey, look. It, it, congratulations, by the way. It's it's a big it's a big deal. It's a big step, and you, you guys are doing the right things. It, it's the passion and the excitement, but you're also having fun when you're doing it. And that's a big key because there's a lot of people out there with passion of what they do. It, without passion, you're not going to get very far. You can have passion, but you have to have fun when you're doing it. Otherwise, it's not worth doing. And you guys are obviously having fun. You, you can hear it in the show. And when I'm, I'm here, I see it. You know, we, it's a, we it, it's a divinely it. inspired marriage of um, debauchery. No, no not Man. debauchery. Stop. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't do that. It, it's passion with fun. And we happen to have like a, an awesome audience. Like the people were like, I don't know who they are other than Amy and, you know, Brian and, you know, I don't know who's listening, but we're going to hit, but we're on track. I know four people. I know four, you know, four is like 10 people. There's eight. eight. So (laughs) thanks. And a cousin, I have a cousin. We all just listen a lot. uh, uh, Over and over again. Um, We are on track. We started the show in October of 2022. Obviously, we're in 20, uh, we're in August of 2023. October. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, October. <laughs> and we are close to hitting a million downloads that, in that, a year. It's incredible. That's yeah. Incredible. Look, I, I was a fan before as a supporter, right? For sure. Yeah, I, you for know, sure. I was following. I was before well, thanks you were to, even thanks doing... to Patrick. Hel- uh, wait, was it Pat? No, I introduced oh, no. you to Pat. It was you. You introduced us to Pat, but then yeah. um, it was Kyle. Kyle. Kyle um, introduced with, yeah. us. Yeah. How's he? Have you talked to him? I just talked to him yesterday. Did yeah. you tell him you were coming on the show? No, I didn't. No, of course not. No, Why but you, you know what? He'll know because he listens. So he's the ninth. <laughs> what? He's the ninth. He's the ninth, <laughs> ninth listener. <laughs> Kyle, what's up, bro? Ky- yeah, he, Kyle's I, a great guy. He, 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 and, you know, he's a food service worker. He's out there um, hitting the pavement. He's a produce guy, and he's he's doing what it does, you know? These sales reps out there are working just as hard as the chefs and helping them out. It's all good stuff. Um, for the record, the salespeople, when you're talking about, like, your, your center plate uh, items... They're available seven days a week, every day of the every day of the year. They're basically available to the to the whoever's on duty at the restaurant. So the the one day a week when the exec has off, and their underling, their sue, whatever is in charge, they're still calling that same salesperson. So that 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 sales individual really doesn't catch catch that break, right. you know. So they're always tuned into the phone. They're they're always they're always plugged in. So it's a testament that when you do have good, you know, um, when you have good salespeople, um, you, you need to really treat them right. I think you, you know, you have to show respect, especially if you make an appointment, keep the appointment. If you can't keep the appointment, make sure you, you give that sales rep at least three hours. I hope that person is not listening. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, I'm just, and that, that doesn't need to be said, but I'm just saying, you know, I always, when I was a chef in the kitchens and somebody came and said, Hey, can I make an appointment with you for X day? I made sure that it was on my calendar. I had an alarm. 
I told people so that it was reminded, you know, sometimes we get jammed up and stuff happens. I get it. But at least you, you then communicate to that individual because they're, they're, they have certain things that they need to meet. And that's one of the bad things about being a chef. When you forget stuff, it's the butterfly effect. You know, stuff happens to that. The manager calls that person. Why didn't you meet that chef? Oh, they, they canceled on me. And then, and then, and then a, a ship sinks somewhere in the South China Sea. Exactly. Because of it. Right. Uh, you know, butterfly effect. Right? Yeah. So currently we're at 867,321 downloads. And today is the 11th. No, 12th. The 12th. Last, and I mean, this is so crazy. In the last seven days, we did 99,000 downloads. Look, what? Yeah. Look. I don't have my glass. Oh, I, I can see that. <laughs> I, I was one of those. <laughs> you can I, see that. I got one of those for yeah. you, Carl. That was one. Bro. Yeah. God, Bruh. that's great. B- hey. B R U H. Bruh. Yeah. Unbelievable. Thank, thank you to everyone that listens to that. I mean, that is. And down. Sorry. that <laughs> That's Grandpa. <laughs> grandpa Smokey. Old Smokey. Um, that's the drink. So the, the, it, it's insane. So I project that we're going to hit a million by the end of October. So October, October, and a million. We're gonna hit a million um, downloads. downloads yeah. well, well, after this episode, especially. Oh okay. yeah, sure. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're here. I'm, I'm here to help support guys. You do a lot on LinkedIn as far as when you're out traveling too, right? You do a lot of live. Yeah, uh, I I try. I try. You still doing TikTok? Uh, not much. I don't do too much. Because you're older. To, Nah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Aren't you my age, Carl? I am, but you know. <laughs> so, but I, are you older? Um, I think I am older. <laughs> yes. Than you. I, no, we are old. We're old guys now. What month are you? I'm still the oldest. Yeah. Well, dude, you're you're way, way, way uh, older, yeah. and you look it too. But what <laughs> today? <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. Does does this matter? No, yeah. no, no, I have a lot and of we're preservatives. Seasoned. We're well seasoned. Yeah. So, and we were talking about sales reps yeah. earlier, right? Mm-hmm. And we've all been in this industry a long time. So what's a good sales rep? What's a sales rep, right? And what, what makes a good sales rep versus a sales rep? Accessibility. I have, so when I, when I train, when I hire and train um, sales reps, uh, I usually go off property and I'll spend two hours, upwards of two hours with that individual. And I'll dart um, questions or a topic. And I just want to, I sit back in it and I'll just listen. Because uh, I want to see how they communicate, how they talk, how they articulate their body language, the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. And after all of it's said and done, and I feel comfortable with that person, I'll get into this very conversation. And it's, you know, what what makes you, what makes you think that you're going to be able to support what we need in terms of, you know, um, service and, you know, for the chefs, clients, whatever. The answer is accessibility. And that means like for me, I'm accessible to my staff. I'm accessible to the upper management. I'm accessible to my clientele. Except for Thursdays. Except for Thursdays. (laughs) Um, Because when you are, if somebody can count on you, you or you will have earned their business because everybody's going to make a mistake. The warehouse is going to make a mistake. The driver is going to make a mistake. There's always going to be a problem. But when they can get in touch with the person who's going to make the fix and the corrective action and who's going to take care of them tomorrow, the next day, next week, next year, if you're accessible, you win. Period. Can I take that a step further? Yeah, because I agree. Yeah, for, for a sales manager, especially, right? We've both been sales managers and you need your reps accessible, but honestly, that just makes a good order taker, right? They're taking care of their customer. They're making sure things are taken care of, but a real good sales rep has knowledge that they're bringing to the chefs. They're bringing something special because look, these chefs have people knocking on their doors every day. And if you're not bringing them something new, something fun, some they're stuck in their walls. They're stuck in these buildings all the time, and they're always looking for something fun to do. They're looking for what's going on out there that I'm not seeing, right? What's happening? And if you're not that sales rep that's bringing them some ideas, maybe it's a special new product that you have. Look, if you're a new sales rep out there, 
learn your products, especially your good ones, not your commodities, whatever. The people are just buying those off a of price. You see, this is a, this, I think this is a very good um, topic, actually, that you stumbled upon uh, just now. Because I think product knowledge is important. Product in my in, in my estimis, uh, estimation, and it's no you know uh, I don't want to quarrel here, but m- let's my, throw down. Yeah, I want to throw got down. The towel. I got the towel, and you're going <laughs> to throw it in. No, but I'm um, kidding. But yeah, at the end of the day, um, product knowledge is literally a phone call away or a text away. You can get every in today's okay. So um, let me let me digress. Twenty five years ago, product knowledge beats out most everything else. Today, it's a little lower on the list because you can get information. It's all at the tip of your finger. What's, what's, it, what's needed today, now, more than anything else, is somebody who is accountable that you know you can count on. Because even right now in where we are, um, October, not August, of uh, 2023, <laughs> um, the broadliners are still having challenges yeah. um, with inventory. People, uh, most companies still have issues with personnel. And at the end of the day, you need to be able to talk to somebody that will get something done for you. Right. That, that's very important, right? Yeah. Chefs, chefs are only as good as their suppliers and their, their kitchen staff and their wait staff. And right. It, it takes, it takes everything to, to run a kitchen really well or a restaurant or, or a hotel. But they need ideas. Well, here, here, I'll, I'll chime in as as a chef. Um, I play one on TV as well. Um, I think it's it's all what you're saying together. But I think it's there's two things. Um, you were definitely hit the nail on the head about you know giving them innovation. He, Ray he pointed at me. Ray is a great example of that, right? When you worked with Ray in the previous monster company that you worked for, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> I remember Ray goes, "Hey, I got these pink pineapples from Costa Rica." And I'm like, I remember those. those I'm like, really, like, really pink. All right. Well, send me a sample of it. Let me see what you know. he's like. Oh, or send me a case or something. He's like, no, I'm going to get you a sample and then you can play with it. I said, all right. We ended up doing um, a ceviche with it. That was completely. That sounds vegan delicious. friendly. It looked like tuna. It, I charred it. It was just gorgeous. It was stunning. When you do that for a chef and you show them something that like, and I'm going to use this as an example, yellow dragon fruit, you know, or the red dragon fruit that Patrick was saying, if we've never seen that before. We're like, we're giddy like a kid. Oh my God, I can, you know, I can do this. Well, this, that, the other thing. I think the other thing you can do too for a chef, I think this is number one priority, communication. A rep that communicates to you, hey, by the way, um, the truck left early or le- left late because they loaded it. They didn't have whatever it was. You know, it's running late. Let me know what you need. I'll meet the truck there to get your priority stuff and I'll bring it to you or whatever. Or, hey, there was an out last night when I sh- when I sent the order in. Whatever it is that they're communicating, the more that the, the rep actually communicates, pro tip, and the more the, the rep communicates to the chef what's going on, they're taking the extinguisher without even having to put out the fire. Mm-hmm. That yeah. makes it, all what you guys said to top it off with a little whipped cream and the cherry on top. Communication is definitely 100%. It's a hard job out there. I Listen, I, really I, I, I do consulting for some uh, companies. And let me tell you, when that phone rings and I know it's one of the sales reps calling me, I pick up that phone because I know they're calling me for a reason. Yeah. Whether they're sitting in front of the client or not, I don't know what's going on. But when that phone rings, it's like the bat phone. Uh, the meathead phone rings. I've got to answer that call because they're, they need to know what they're doing. And the first questions I asked the rep is what is the application that the chef is using that product for? Once I find out that, then it goes, okay, this, 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 and this is what they can use. Mm. And that's imperative. Like, you know, a lot of companies are missing the boat because they're not utilizing chefs in the marketplace. And that's one of the things about, what do we call the event now? Oh, the walk and talk innovation. We were talking about it yesterday, the party. You were trying to think of the name for the party. Yeah, that's not the name. Ideation. Ideation. That was what it was. What we're talking about. We're not going to do that. But here's the thing. If you can ideation, (laughs) if you can ideation, which is come up with ideas how to use the product and show the chef that, you're giving them everything they need without doing anything. And in today's world, when they're not managing the kitchen, that's huge. Yeah. You see, they need tools. you, You see, 
I guess, I guess, I guess where there is a, where, where I have a, a distinction between product knowledge and, and um, communication. And when I'm saying accessibility, because I put such an emphasis, and this is me personally, my experiences, because I put such an emphasis on the higher, you know, finding the right candidate. Um, I'm not worried about them learning the product and I'm not worried about the fact that, you know, whether they're going to communicate or not, because I know they're going to do it because I know that was part of the hire. But what makes all of those things gel together, and this is my opinion, what makes it gel together is the fact that when you, the chef, when you send a text on a Sunday or you make a phone call at 10 o'clock at night, that, that, that individual, maybe they don't answer the phone at 11 on a, on a Friday night, but they're going to text you within 15 minutes. That's all I'm asking. Because then you know, okay, somebody's got me. I forgot. You know, like you got out. What happens all the time. Chef gets out at um, 11 o'clock at night, forgot to place their produce order or whatever. And all of a sudden you're getting a 1230, um, you know, oh crap moment. They just need some reassurances. You take care of that chef. They will never, ever leave you. That's my whole career. I mean, I'm really fortunate with what I had in my life with this whole produce thing. I must have opened a thousand accounts in my, in my uh, tenure, you know, and it's all based on just being at the ready, you know, being there. Yeah, it takes a lot. It's a hard job. It's, you know, I worked in kitchens and I worked as sales rep as well and sales management and they're all they're all very hard, the, the whole industry. I, I think it's funny yeah. that chefs, when they move from being in the kitchen into a sales rep position, they're almost like a pariah. They, they've left and, well, you're just a sales rep now. You're not a chef. Um, I've seen a, I see that. Uh, I've seen it the opposite. They're like, oh, man, you got out. You made it. You know, like, you, congratulations. You, you, yeah. yeah. Well, not, I mean, I, I've seen both sides of the coin when I left. Because where else do you go? When a chef is looking like in the twilights of their career, where do they go? You either end Podcasting. up well. Okay, right. You either you 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 either end up at a country club if you're lucky, right. an assisted living facility as you know. There's a chef there. Let, let me tell you something. Uh, the country club. I have to take that off the list because let me tell you something. Some of the pot, the the uh, country clubs. That is some hard. Butt no, no, work. no. I'm not saying it's not hard. What I'm saying is typically they're not on the line. They're directing. Right. And it makes life a lot easier. And you can you can exit. You know, you well, could I, spend your last years, you know, running a, a country club. Well, there's, I've got Lance Cook and, and Joseph Waters that would probably beg to differ with you because those guys, they have so much passion yeah. that they're on their lines with their cooks. Uh, okay. And they can't uh, find uh, cooks. Right then there is. Oh, so yeah. That's well, that's another that's story. A, yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. Yeah, that's a whole. But the, the next the next best exit is what? Sales. Sales. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's where it goes. But they, I, I'll be honest with you. I worked harder and longer for the broadliner I worked with than I was in the industry. I worked in almost 80, 90 hours a week for the broadliner because again, we talked about it. Yeah. You'd go out, work with somebody from seven in the morning to five o'clock in the afternoon, put my daughter to bed at eight, whatever mm -hmm. it was. And then I would have to finish all my paperwork. And it was that midnight. paperwork is a, is really, mm -hmm. that's the worst part of it is the paperwork. <sighs> yeah. Spreadsheets and big brother watching. Oh my you. God. Yeah. That's terrible. Did you put it in two? I, I thought I was going to get out of nights, weekends and holidays. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> you, you got right into it. Yep, it it yeah, didn't it, change. But it's funny yeah. because when I was actually in the in the in the restaurant uh, business, um, I didn't know what it was like anymore. Just you know, to not work on a holiday or a weekend, you know. And then uh, when I transition transition into sales, and how I was kind of like, you know, goaded into you know bribed into this sort of whatever. Um, Oh, all the free time. As long as you do your business, all the free time in the world. Yeah, it's no. just true. There's true. There's a there's truth some. to it. But you got to, in order to get to the point where you have spare time on your hands, it's years. It's years, and you have to be like in the upper echelon of that sales company of your your team, and then nobody bothers you. Nobody questions you. Nobody Unless does your numbers go down. Well, that's another story. That was a salesman that talked him into that. Just, right. 100%. So I, I, I learned right away in my sales career that all my bosses are sales guys what's, what's, or girls, but they were, they were selling me all the time. And it, I had to learn. It, it, it was, I was, I was a um, um, front end manager at a restaurant at the time. And I was really at my 
I was breaking I, point. Yeah, I didn't want to do it anymore. I was I was really had enough. I burnt. I was burnt out. And my produce sales guy, who he wasn't, we weren't buying from him, so he was courting us a lot, and he was in all the time. His name was Sean. He used to come in all the time, and um, and I was telling him one day, I was like, oh, God, I want to get the hell out of here. I'm so done with this. He's like, Well, why don't you get into produce? I go, What? I don't even like what? I'm like, do you even make any money? Like, I, I looked at these. I, I did. <laughs> anyway, we start talking. And I was like, actually, this doesn't sound so bad. And uh, he ended up l- luring me into uh, um, into the company. And 25 years later, he looks older than me. I I don't. I, yeah. I don't look. I don't look older. I mean, maybe because of the the, the gray. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> I mean, if I shaved, I would, I would look, oh, dude, years. if I shaved, I would look 20 I, years younger. I would look 25 years younger. Than <laughs> Probably. You know what I mean? Like this is why gonna... I don't have a beard. <clears throat> you look like you're like 22 or something. Yeah, well, I act. At so, least I, like st- I still think you should go for the mullet. Yeah. What? The mullet. Him? Uh, yeah. Didn't remember the picture yeah. of Silent Bob? Yeah, I do. But he's got good hair, hair man. Like you, you can, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I would be like pound sand. <laughs> so, all right, Circle C Farms, Nicole Cruz. Right? Yeah, we're, that was a good. That was a good. Uh, we're we're chit chatting yesterday, and she po- like, and it's amazing because it's a four day old post, and it's a, the graphic is here. Picture this: they tell you these are bad, and it's a picture of uh, you know a pad of uh, stick of butter, flour, sunlight, natural eggs, real milk. Um, a real piece of meat and uh, whatever that is. I don't know what that other one is, but, uh, and then they say, so they can sell you these instead. And you have like a prescription pills and, you know, SPF 50, you know, meaning there's a lot of cancer stuff that they say now, Crisco oil and, you know, processed cereal, foods. right? There was yeah, cereal on there. Cheerios or something. Um, and then the Beyond Burger, which is your plant based, right. chemically filled C- product, right? 60. Two thousand, uh, you know, actions here, likes and you know, emojis and whatever. Sixty-two thousand on her post. Twenty-seven thousand shares. Are you kidding me? And, but if you read some of this stuff, because I, you know, I, 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 I put on there like a hashtag truth, you know, because I believe this, and um, I can't tell you there was I can't find where I am in here now, but like there was like 30 people who gave me the laughing emoji. And I'm just like, what the hell is wrong with you people? There's some real, uh, not everybody understands where their food comes from, Carl. It's very, you know, food comes from the grocery store. No, that's where they think it comes from. Oh, exactly. They they go to the grocery store and then they get it. And you don't realize until when you have a a natural disaster or you're like, where am I going to get my food? Yeah. yeah. I, did, did anyone learn anything during COVID? During COVID? Like, yeah. When we learned how crazy we are, but I yeah. think that's about Well, it. We, we all Maybe have a I'm level of BSCs. For myself. I was getting, I, I, you know, at the time I was in produce, right? I was, you know, distribution, whatever. And um, I knew, I knew what we had in our warehouse. We had just loaded up the facility with like, I forget how many tractor trailer loads of product the week when. You know, everyone's March 17th. Yeah. Everyone started going to the store retail and nobody went to restaurants anymore. Couldn't go. Right. So we had a full, anyway, there were farmers who were like, there were just pickup trucks loaded with different various, you know, peppers and, um, melons and all sorts of stuff. Just everything dying, dumping it on the sides of the road. Thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. Of, and and there was a point where you couldn't get this stuff at the store. Go to Publix, shelves are basically empty. R.C. Hayton Farms uh, bulldozed or mowed back into the land one million pounds of green beans. Yeah. Yes. This was happening all over. Number one, to me, that is like, what an atrocity. Like, that is that is just disgusting. What What's worse, sorry for interrupting, what's worse about that is that people were like, well, at least it's going back into the land. They don't realize the seed, the money, the energy, oh my God. the natural resources, the farmer and his labor to do that. They lost all the money. They couldn't even pay their people because they didn't go to market, so they never got paid. So at the end of the day, you get these knuckleheads on posts like this. And they're just, 
and they're just like on the teat of something that comes in a, in a packaged bag and they don't have any perception, any idea what happens with the people. And I'm not one of them who gets their hands dirty in the soil. Like you have to respect so much of what these individuals, these farmers do and the farm hands and, and then, and then the, 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 the truck drivers with the semis were, you know, with the loads going back and forth with you. My goodness, people need to open their damn eye. I am so up to here with ridiculous people who have no concept of what goes on in the real physical world. You know, and we've talked about this, and I'm going to mention again, when I was up visiting with Keith and working with Keith, one of the things Keith mentioned, and he's like, hey, have you ever seen this movie called Food Inc. or Food Chains? And I'm like, no, we watched it. And I, you know, I sent you, both you and John, I'm like, hey, you guys need to watch this. And this is one of the reasons why when you become a farmer advocate, and I said to myself, hey, what better way to become a farmer advocate than to grow your own you know, food. John came up with an idea when he had moved into his house, and he was like, oh, you know, I, I dropped these two garden beds. And I was like, kind of jealous. I'm like, Hey, he's growing his own food. This is pretty cool. So I started researching it. I have a six by three by one now and we've got corn and a whole bunch of different vegetables. And I'm bringing my daughter and showing her, Hey, look, have you looked at the garden today? Look at the corn shoots, look at the peppers that are growing, look at our tomatoes. And we've strung up a trellis and all that. I'm trying to get her involved so that she knows not, not only where the food's coming from, but the process of growing. And then you're, you know, you plant 10, plants and Keith had six cucumber plants and had 400 pounds of cucumbers. I'm like, good God, I hope I don't have a bumper crop because you guys are getting cucumbers. And then John's like, don't worry, some will die. And you know, you don't realize how fragile our food system and our ecosystem is for our food, you know, the, between the soil, between the rain, between everything that we need to do to grow our food. And then having what, what was that one guy, TikTok? He said four major companies own the food Two, Really? Well, it's two. Well, there's one that own all the seeds, Montesano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One. Yeah. Well, there's two companies that probably own a big part of, of Montesano. Con Conagra is another one. That's a big one. So listen, <clears throat> there's a guy. His, so his, um, on TikTok. It's a guy. It's a guy. I know a guy. Come on, you got to sound like I know that guy. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know a guy. I know a guy. Right. <laughs> so, um, his TikTok handle is cancel this clothing company. He's got 972,000 followers, 12 million likes, okay? Um, and he's into, the you know, the conspiracy stuff, but he actually comes with facts. Like, he does research, and, and he talks about where he gets the, the data from and whatnot. Um, and it's, he's entertaining to, 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 to watch. Anyway, I, I, he did a thing on... Um, Cereal. Right. The, well, the, that particular one that you sent me was about cereals. Right. So um, I reached out to him and uh, I, I said, hey, listen, you know, uh, you know, we were the number one uh, food podcast on Apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, just threw that in there hashtag, nonchalantly. Ha right? Hashtag Patrick Kelly. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> we, so no, I, Jeez, <laughs> I, um, no, I did. I, I did mention that because like the guy's big, you know, he's big deal on uh, TikTok. Right. So anyway. Sounds like more downloads. Um, yeah, no, that's a lot. Yeah, no, we're not going to be, although we're in no, the world no. of podcasts, we are murdering it. Okay. In Number the world of podcasts. Yeah. Thank you. But I reached out to him and I said, Hey, look, this is who we are, what we do. Um, I follow you. I love what you, I'd love to have you on the show. He, uh, took a few days, but he got back and he said, sounds awesome. He goes, I worked in the kitchen before I was, you know, dishwasher, whatever. I get it. I totally understand. So I can't freaking wait so this cat we get him on the show because i i just think it's going to be huge yeah i told you you can't do that until you take a day off or take two two hours of your life to watch those two movies buddy i got i got two young i got two young ones at home that i don't get i haven't watched a tv show for myself and i don't even know when what time do they go to bed um, we all go to bed at the same time. So stop getting up at three o'clock in the morning saying John and I text messages. <laughs> I'm working. And sleep a little bit later and then you can, well, put on the background music. <laughs> then I can't concentrate, you know, <laughs> uh, but I, you come I, up I get, with more excuses than a politician. I, I'm a doer. I'm getting up at, <laughs> I get up at every day at three 30 in the morning. I'm doing, and he sends texts, he send, sends texts to John and I. But it has, it's relevant to what we're talking about here. Put your phones on snooze. They, they are. Yeah, no, it's not, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't, don't get it twisted. 
they're not up. Oh, I'm, did we? I don't wake yeah, up no. for that. No, yeah. Yeah. I, I learned be, my lesson. I could be stuck in a ditch <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> These guys. Well, that's if it's it. three in the morning, yeah, you could. Be. You shouldn't yeah. be in a ditch yeah. in the first yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. <laughs> I'm gonna. I embrace that. Um, you should be watching your favorite book. You gotta watch out for those guys, you know. But, um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. This is what I do, man. I'm, you know, I'm. Look, I'm not cooking. And I'm not taking pictures, right? What am I doing? Eating. I'm, I'm, I'm other than eating, <laughs> I'm connecting dots behind the scenes with all this we other technical, that. all this other stuff. Well, it sounds like me to me. You're talking about real food, yeah, right? That's that's whole, really what you're talking yeah, about. Is whole, real food. It's not just whole food. If you look at what's going on in our industry, again, if you watch food chains, and, like without the yeah. you know change in, I'm the, not even the, talking about bio. Uh, bioengineered and GMO labeling. I'm not even talking about that. I'm looking at, you know, look at the, our, our greens, our salad greens, right? What's right next door to them? Feedlots. Yeah. That's smart because manure doesn't do anything and carry E. coli. So there's things that we're doing as it, a whole. It does, though. Yeah, that's my point. I sarcasm. Know, I'm um, sarcasm that's, back at you. But that's, that's the problem, even with our whole foods. Like you think, oh, I'm going to stop eating meat because I don't want to eat E. coli. And guess what? More E. coli is being found more in our vegetables, which you can't cook to 160 degrees or 140 degrees, whatever it is, to kill whatever is in there. What are you doing? You're eating it raw. So yeah. how do you clean it? You don't. You, you, you can't. Right. You can't. So we have to do better as far as our farming is concerned, as far as big farming, I should say, not the, the little guys that are doing it the right way, not big farming. Yeah, well, the problem is is there's no laws covering that, right? So there's laws in how they're handling the cattle, and there's laws in how they're handling the veg or salad or whatever they're growing, but there's no laws in what are they doing in between and around and surrounding it. It's it, it, unfortunately food has become such a big money maker in this country that people are two paying, trillion dollars paying to make it's also laws. The, it's two also, trillion dollars. It's also the way to. It's also the way to have interruptions in you know societal interruptions is with this food and well when you like you said you have two companies that own like look at the baby formula. Uh, the incident, right? You only had two companies making it. I can't. We imagine. just had another one. We had botulism. Imagine. Oh my god! I, you know, we were. You know, my my children were a little older. You right. Know, they were, but I couldn't imagine. I'm at, yeah. Having a newborn or a, a you know, and your formula, you can't get infant. it for your kid. Oh. Mm-hmm. But that's 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 the problem with the United States when you have smaller so companies that start and then the big ones say, well, you know, they do it so well, we're just going to eat them up. Well, anyway, this is why. This is why. Tell you, food chains and food so, Inc. watch the movies. Yes, this is why. Thank you, individuals. Keith. Yes, Keith. Someday we'll meet. <laughs> um, this is why uh, the 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 consumer needs to know who their local farmers are. They're around. I don't care where you live. There's a farm near you. Okay, uh, even I mean, except for you, shitty folk. You know, maybe it's a little bit different, right? But for everybody else, there's a farm not far from you, and you need to know who they are. Because, you know, when there there will be another thing that happens, and when it does, and your Walmart doesn't have stock, or your public, whoever, when your broad, you know, when the, when the box store doesn't have what you need, guess who's going to have it? And not only that, they're probably throwing stuff away, because nobody's coming to get it, because nobody knows. It's ridiculous. I, 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 this, this is a, I get hot on this. It really makes me aggravated. I, I, um, how do you think it feels for some of the good chefs that are out there? I get it. That's you what know, I'm saying. We're, we're, and here's the thing. Same so, as me. They feel the same way I do. Well, and here's the thing. The, the consumers don't realize the power they have. If they don't want non-GMO, they don't have to get it because that's the driving force. When you sit there and say, I don't have enough time to make something that takes literally 10 minutes. You're going to go to Publix and get that or whoever. You're going to get that meal that's already made, pop it in the microwave, and it's doot, 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 seven minutes later, whatever it is. <clears throat> Listen, I'm guilty of that as well. I mean, when 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 I have a couple of times a year, you know, family goes away for a week or whatever, I'm fending for myself. Except for Thursdays. Right. <laughs> Except for th- like, Thursday is my oasis day. It really is. It's my oasis day. I have, I look forward to Thursdays, not only for the food. It's funny, it's like John and school. I don't. How can you not? I mean, this has been amazing. It, so, but yeah, it, it, it's like high school camaraderie. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, so I, I want to. So 
not everybody has time and it, right. It, it's a crazy world that or oregano in, right? or a piece or, of meat, you or know? rosemary. Oh, yeah, There's absolutely. The joke. Yeah. Well, well, waka, waka, well waka. played, well played. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say at the least, you know, knowing your farmer, it's great. Trying to figure out where your food comes from is difficult. The bare minimum that you can do is look at the ingredients on what you're buying. And I would say that even to chefs, because there's a lot of chefs out there that are buying stuff and they don't know what's in it. And that that's where, go back to the sales rep really quick, that's where a good sales rep can help out. Teach your chefs what's in that product that they're buying. If if the product is reputable to begin with. You know, okay, because it's yeah. not all. No, it's not all. Yeah. There, there's a lot out there that uh, isn't. Some of it, and some of it's not expensive. It's not always price driven. Some is, some isn't. It depends on the product. I love what Patrick said last week. He goes, I, I pay for my, my, my produce from when I want it. And I love that because, again, it's seasonality. You know, you, you don't go get a peach when it's not peach season. That's not what you're doing. What you're getting is a product that's not, it's an inferior product. Obviously, and when it comes to produce, Patrick's going to know, right? And I, I love Patrick, and he's a great guy, and he's spot on. And the best thing about produce, the absolute best thing about produce is when it's in season, it's the cheapest. Of course. So, you know. And, when, and just for, the, for those who same don't. Same thing with seafood, by the way. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. For those who don't connect the dots on that, when it's grown and it's local, the shipping it's there. It's abundance, uh, you know, it, so supply, demand and, and shipping, you know, actual logistics. When it's not in season, that means it's coming from somewhere south of the border or Canada or even overseas. Like, you know, and, and you're paying a premium for product that's gas to keep it alive, you know, to keep it so where you can where it's edible. The quality is low. Or the flavor profile the profiles are weak. I, I By the time it gets to like you, those gas tomatoes. I hate no. gas tomatoes. No, no? I, oh, don't like I heard that somewhere. Yeah, no, I, I like I, what, I like what Patrick said last week. I want a leaner. I want to lean over the sink oh, yeah, to eat yeah. the peach because right, it's yeah. so juicy yeah. and it yeah. just you know all over and, you. And it's going to be the best price mm-hmm. at that point. It's going to be the best flavor profile. Look, when you walk into a grocery store or a restaurant and they say, I'm sorry, we don't have romaine. Fine. Do you, buy sit, there, do you sit there and complain or do you look at no. like Boston bid lettuce, bid lettuce, lettuce or, yeah. or, you know, uh, whatever hearts of romaine or whatever might be in we, season for you. We definitely get stuck on eating what we want and we're used to certain things, but I, I, man, when you buy it in season it's, and, and it could be seafood, it could be, it's everything. It's supply and demand in our industry. So when you're buying things right, it's usually the best price. Well, you shouldn't have grouper uh, 12 months a year. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Should, all this stuff. Yeah. Ah, oh my God. Uh, so we're into, uh, right. we're into this an hour and six minutes. You know, right. you know, I'm shaking my head mm-hmm. at the grouper should be on year round. <laughs> I, I know. Like Mahi Mahi should not be either. Yeah. I mean, we de- we have to do a better, I think one of the states in the union that does the best sustainability is Alaska. It's part of their constitution. So they set limits on how much can be fished. You know, in part of, as part of my personal constitution, oh, yeah. I don't have limits on what I consume. Oh, we know. We've seen. We've been <laughs> seen. Yeah. So, right. is, so is your waistline. You know what I'm saying? All right. So um, shout outs to uh, Jonathan Rodriguez over at Salimar in Midtown. Uh, Tampa. We will be having our October 23rd uh, food industry walk and talk media bash connection networking bash. Um, Anyway, uh, shout out to him. Uh, Southern Deli and Provisions and also Yoder's Southern Creamy Creamery, which is fantastic ice cream. Coming on board. Um, It's going to be cool. Big Pooch, Brian, Jane, Amy, Brian Framson, J Dog, the Patrick Kelly. Uh, thanks for always being involved in everything that we do. John Hernandez, you, the Jeffrey, uh, the man. You. Prayers to Israel. Let's everybody get like normal again. Okay, this is ridiculous. Go back to church, people. We and are temple. And temple. out and temple. 
Shalom in the home, baby.